It was the Gujarat pogrom of Muslims in India. This 2002 massacre caused Prime Minister Modi to be banned from entering the United States for 10 years. It was also this pogrom where the tragedy of Bilqis Banu began. As Muslims were running for their lives, Bilqis Banu and her 16 relatives also fled their ancestral village looking for safety as their homes were being set on fire. But safety was nowhere to be found. More than 2,000 victims did not survive to tell their story. But Bilqis Banu did. This is the story of her courageous struggle for justice. Bilqis Banu's ordeal is the story of India, where Muslims, Christians, and Dalits find it almost impossible to obtain justice. The men who raped her also killed her three-year-old daughter and two-day-old niece, along with her niece's mother. That day, they killed 14 of her family members. Here is how Bilqis recounted her story to the BBC. They attacked us with swords and sticks. One of them snatched my daughter from my lap, threw her on the ground, bashing her head into a rock. Her attackers were her neighbors in the village, men she had seen almost daily while growing up. They used to buy milk from her family. They tore off her clothes, and several of them raped her, ignoring her pleas for mercy. Her cousin, who had delivered a baby just two days earlier, while they were on the run, was raped and murdered, and her newborn was killed as well. All of the women in the family were raped before being killed. Bilqis Banu survived because she lost consciousness and her attackers left, believing she was dead. The culprits were Brahmin Hindus. They followed this Muslim family as they ran for their lives. But the brave Bilqis Banu survived to fight back. The very next day, she reached out to the police station to file a report. Instead of taking her report, the police chief threatened her, producing a distorted version of the events and omitting any mention of the rape. The police officers threatened her with dire consequences if she pursued the case any further. Police often do this to Muslims, Christians, and Dalits in India. But Bilqis did not give up. She kept knocking on doors. Finally, she approached the Supreme Court of India. That is when a trial began. The court convicted and sentenced 11 of the 13 accused to life in prison in 2008. But all these rapists are now free. Free because they are Brahmin, the highest caste of Hindus. This is BJP lawmaker C.K. Raulji. He served six terms and is running again for office. He was the leading member of the government panel which released the 11 rapists and killers. Just listen to him. The work of the family member was Brahman. He says they are Brahmins, men of good upbringing and family values. Their conduct in jail was also good. No one should be surprised at this statement. Brahmins control India. Brahmins are only 4% of India, but 45% of all prime ministers were Brahmins. The same is true about the rest of the power positions. In Hindu laws and caste system, Brahmins can get away with murder. Brahmins can also get away with rape. Here is the Hindu Book of Law, Manu Smriti. This book almost forgives Brahmins if they rape a lower caste person. The complete immunity enjoyed by Brahmins is unambiguously stated at the very end of Chapter 11 Penances in Shloka, verse 162. 
Chapter 8, verse 380 says that a Brahmin should be sent away instead of punishing him for rape or murder. This book of Hindu laws is on the rise. Here is RSS chief Mohan Bhagwat quoting Manu Smriti to declare the supremacy of Brahmins. From a firstborn, that is a Brahmin, born in that country, let all men on earth learn their respective duties. This is chapter 1, page 73 of the Manu Smriti certified by the RSS as the authentic source. He recites the following passage on August 5, 2020 at the foundation ceremony for the Ram Temple on the ruins of the Babri Mosque. The Prime Minister of India, Modi, a member of the RSS, was present as well. Many in the government opposed releasing the rapists and the killers of Bilqis' family. But RSS member Amit Shah sided with the rapists. He himself was accused in a triple murder case, but his judge was mysteriously found dead. Amit Shah's home ministry recommended the premature release of the rapists and the killers. But even before their release, the convicts enjoyed a good life while in jail. Some were paroled and furloughed for as long as 1,000 days. One of the convicts, while on parole, even reportedly molested a woman. But they are free now. They received a heroic welcome by the RSS BJP regime. Free because they are Brahmin, free because their victims were Muslims, the outcast of India. And as for Bilqis Banu, she is still fighting. She has moved homes almost a dozen times now. The fight for justice can be long but rewarding.